now that we can hold on to our new selections and then we've separated this out from finding all the uh, the monster objects from the actual button press, now we can actually implement our cycle selection. So we're going to do that, which is just going in here and iterating through our list of selectable objects. There's a couple of things to understand about that, though, because we may want to loop through our selection. So you know, that might create a little complication, but we already have our select next button and our select previous button set up. Underneath those buttons, they're actually calling the appropriate methods. We just need to add the code and the methods. So that's what we'll do. It's easy enough to say, set the active selection to an index and then increase the index by one. The problem is what happens if we have, let's say two monsters in our list and we're on the second one and we want to increase it to the next, we need to, go back to the beginning, right? So really what we want to do is we want to get the current selection. And when we want to go to the next, we need to determine, do we have a next or do we need to go back to the beginning? We can do that by testing the length of the array. And then once we resolve that, then we just make the selection from the current value, right? So uh, I want to count up until I get to the end of my list. And then if I'm at the end, I want to return back to the beginning. So we can loop infinitely through our list of monsters. Uh, the first thing I need to do here, though, in order to keep track of my current selection, I need to create another uh, class-wide uh, field here, private int, we'll just call it selection index, we'll zero. All right, we'll just start at zero. Uh, we'll reassign this so it doesn't really matter. First thing is we'll make sure that our array isn't empty, right? Like we actually have a list of something. So we'll check if list is valid. So if selectable game objects, which remember we found in our other section, our uh, uh, update selectable, if our selectable game objects dot count is less than or equal to zero, then there's nothing in the list. So we might as well just return. So if we keep going at this point, then we know that we can uh, actually do something with it. So first we'll check if we're at the end, go back to the beginning because the beginning will be our next, right? There's nothing else after it. Uh, if our current selection index, right? Our current selection we're holding on to up here, zero. If our current selection index is greater than or equal to our selectable objects that count minus one. I uh, remember we start counting at zero. So if we're count minus one, we're, uh, we're currently at the end, right? So if we're on the last one or some other value way above that, just uh, check for that just in case, then reassign the selection index to be zero. Otherwise, increase index to next one. Selection index plus plus. So count up one, right? If we're at the end, go back to zero. Otherwise, count up one. Uh, after we've done that, uh, ensure our next index object is valid. Like make sure that there's actually something slotted into that list. It should be fine because we know we're we're figuring it out here, but maybe we expand on this code later. We really just want to make sure that it's valid uh, before we make the selection. So we'll say if selectable uh, game objects dot selection index, which we just reassigned is not equal to null then then make our selection right this is where we make our selection which is just selection dot right we don't want to make our selection on an object that is not valid so we're just checking we're doing a little uh little null check here dot active object uh, spelling active object it's equal to our list of all total selectable objects right selectable game objects but with the current selection index it's kind of weird, but like basically we have our list of all total possible selectable monsters and our current selection is just moving up through that list. So we're at the current place in our list out of all the possible total, which we were making sure that this is valid by all this stuff up here. And if we're at the end, we loop back to the beginning. Uh, otherwise we just move on to the next one in the list. So let's try that, save, come back in here. Oh boy, let's try it. Next, 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 next. Okay, cool. Like what if we had multiple monsters, right? Next, 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 next. Right, you'll see it didn't update because we added another one in, in the scene, right? Uh, but if we were to change our selection, 
now it's it's there. So uh, it's a little minor bug, but if we wanted to fix that, there's a little thing we can add here um, down here called private void on hierarchy change. Now this is just something that Unity will call for us, uh, kind of like update or on GUI or whatever. So if you want to know if the object hierarchy changed, so like a new game object was added or deleted or whatever, right? We duplicated one, then we want to update our selectable, right? So let's try this. So save that. And that's just something you can look through the API or you just have to Google to find out about. Uh, it's just something Unity provides to us. But now if we make our selection, so drag in undead, right? Cycle through the list. Now, without changing our selection, we make a new monster of undead. We cycle through the list now, then we update our, our selection. So a uh, little thing there. Okay, uh, and the last thing we need to do is just the inverse of all of this for our select previous. So we'll just simplify this. If, right, we're, we're gonna validate the list first. Right? We're gonna check to make sure the list is valid. If selectable, uh, you know, we can just copy paste this right here. All right, okay, we can simplify this because I can move faster now. Okay, so we're checking to make sure it's valid. We're checking if we're at the beginning because we're going previous, right? We're counting backwards. If we're at the beginning, we need to go to the end. So it's kind of like the inverse of what we're doing up here. So if selection index is less than or equal to zero, just catch it just in case. Selection index is equal to selectable, the total, uh, like at the very last object in our list is what we're trying to do. That count minus one, because remember uh, we count backwards uh, when we're going through an array. So if we only have one thing in our uh, list, then it's one minus one is where index is zero. We're at the uh, first point. Else, right, if we're not at the beginning, then just subtract it by one. So we're just counting down through our list. If we're at the beginning, go to the end, count down. Okay, and the last thing is we need to validate, just like we did before, if selectable game objects select index. Oh man, we could have just copy pasted that. That's fine. It's null. Then make the selection. Equal to... Alright, I probably should have just copy pasted that. That's fine. Practice our typing. Okay. Okay, I think that'll do it. I mean, all we did is we just did the inverse logic of our select next. Uh, but so we can loop through our array. Again, there's probably an easier way to loop through an array or something that's already provided. It's just, I, I wanted to explain the concept too, but we'll work through it a step at a time. Save this, save all, come back here, and hopefully this should work. So next, 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 previous, 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 next, next, previous, previous. Okay, select all, next, 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 previous, previous, select all, dragon, select all, previous, right? Nothing happens because there's only one. Uh, and then none, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. Okay, so this is our little selection tool. It's it's not too fancy, but I hope it at least illustrates the concepts of how you can begin to do things inside of your scene. You can look through objects, you can save them, you can detect if something changed. You can start to use this and use these concepts to build your own tools if, if you wanna keep uh, doing, you know, selection things, but maybe you want to do something else. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Like there's so many other ways you can, you can expand on this, but I hope that this is enough to get you started and at least just to understand the basics so that uh, you don't feel too intimidated, you know, diving off and just exploring this more. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I think this is as far as I want to get the editor window tool. And I hope that you can also see like how not, if not just tedious, but like how much work goes into editor scripting. So some of our newer solutions like, you know, UI elements or UI toolkit or whatever it's being called now, uh, will help you get around some of this by doing more visual, what you call it, WYSIWYG, uh, where you can use tools to drag and drop and see how it's gonna look before you put in the code. Um, that's what their newer tools will allow you to do. But I thought it was helpful to see how this stuff would work if you wanted to do it through code. So uh, hopefully that helps you out.